So if 2023 was the year of train derailments, 2024 is on track to be the year of barge mishaps, right? We've had so many things barge related and it's only April. So the first one, obviously the uh, Francis Scott Key bridge that collapsed due to the barge that ran into it, the dolly. Then you had the barge in New York, which I don't want to mess this one up. Um, in the New York Harbor, this was about a week ago. One of the tugboats was pulling this barge and it got stuck in uh, anchor Anchorage near the Ver Verrazano Narrows Bridge. I don't know where that bridge is somewhere in New York, but that you had another one get stuck there. And then just a couple days ago, because of the flooding in Ohio, you had the Ohio River basically overflow, if you will, and 26 barges got loose. It's like a stampede of barges. So you had 26 barges get loose. This said that um, according to this, Several bridges across Pittsburgh late Friday and early Saturday morning were closed as more than two dozen cargo barges broke loose and careened down the flooded Ohio River. The McKees Rocks Bridge was closed in both directions and rail traffic was shut down on the rail bridge to um, Bruno Island. This is a, according to a public safety official in Pittsburgh. Both are now reopened, I believe. The 26 barges broke loose about 11.25 p.m. on Friday after flooding rain swelled the Ohio River. According to Pittsburgh Public Safety, only three barges were empty. The rest of them were loaded with dry cargo like coal. I don't know if you guys remember this, and I, I did not look this part up before we started recording, but last year, towards the end of last year, there was the, um, the barges with the coal on it that hit some key lock bridge I swear it was the Ohio River. Was it the Delaware? I can't remember exactly where it was, but it was one of those things. They had one of them, some of them had coal. Then there was another one, another bridge, uh, barge thing that happened with the corn that was in it. it. It feels like all these ways that we ship things, whether it's by, by rail or by barge, seem to have the most issues. I don't really see many planes falling out of the sky that are transporting things, you know, UPS stuff and FedEx stuff and Amazon stuff, yet all the trains and the barges that go to carry the things that we rely on seem to miraculously fall off tracks or careen down rivers and slam into bridges and whatnot. I just thought that Interesting isn't really the right word, but that's what I'm talking about because it interested me when it happened. The barges caused extensive damage to Peggy's Harbor. This is according to public safety officials. A local reporter said that the barges crashed into between 60 and 70 boat slips, crushing both the boats and the dock. He said a boat owner told him, I've never seen carnage like this before. Because you got to think about it. You got 26 barges just careening that's where they use that me careening down this river and anything it hits it's going to destroy and a lot of people with marine you know the marinas or even private boat docks their boats are going to get destroyed their docks are going to get destroyed it says a tugboat corralled 11 of the barges as they struck the bruno i don't know if i'm saying that right b-r-u-i-n-o-t bruno island train bridge the second part of the video attached to the top of the story uh, shows the barges approaching the bridge and making it through without colliding Let's see if there's a video here. Oh, so here's kind of like a picture of it, if you will, not a video. I don't want to play anything. I'm really trying not to use any anybody's stuff, whether it is, you know, the news or not. I don't edit for a reason. Let me just really quick put this in here because this is very important for everybody to know how our I don't it's not even really freedom of speech, I guess, that's being attacked right now. I don't really know what to call it. But there was a um a video that this guy did on YouTube. I think he did a live stream for like three hours and he showed 10 seconds, 10 seconds y'all of a Fox news, Fox news clip of something that was going on. And the rest of the three hour thing was him talking about stuff. 10 seconds, Fox news then went after this guy for having that, that clip up that video up and had him take it down. When you can't even show the news, on YouTube, that to me says like something bad. I don't know if it's YouTube or if it's Fox News or any other news stations. There's so many people out there right now where you can't show what they call B-roll um, because there's the possibility of your video getting taken down by either the original creator being a news station or YouTube itself, which is why people tell me all the time, you know, you need to edit and you need to put the, the B-roll in and quit showing us your computer. No, 
No, because then what happens when they take away everything that we have done here, everything we have talked about, because somebody in one of the newsrooms or somebody in YouTube decides that they don't want anybody else's stuff intermingled, which is why I never use anything. I never use B-roll. I just show you all a quick little thing from the computer and we keep it trucking, my dudes. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that to you. So if you, if for some reason you go to look for a creator or you look for a certain video and it's not there, it could be because they used B-roll and somebody got their feelings hurt and had them take it down. So just be very cognizant of that because again, I don't, I don't think that's really a first amendment thing they're going after. But the news taking stuff down is really weird to me because it's the news. They should not have a lock on them being the only ones who can use it. It's the news. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. But anyway, now the reason these things were interesting to me is because right now you have the FBI working at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So this is what happened. Federal criminal investigation has been opened on the Key Bridge crash. We were when it happened live, not really live, I was like a couple hours after it happened, but we went live here on Squirrel Tribe uh, roughly four or five hours after the dolly, that, that barge, the Indian barge, hit the bridge because they claimed power outage and all this other stuff, right? Bridge collapsed. People were on the bridge. There were workers on the bridge, cars on the bridge. They fell into the water. Six people have been presumed dead. N numerous bodies have been pulled out from those people that were missing, a lot of them being... Um, immigrant workers who were working for the road company or the construction company, the bridge company, they were repairing potholes and things on the bridge at the time of the collapse. And I remember telling you guys, watching the video of the collapse, that it seemed to me that it was, I'm, I didn't want to use the word intentional, and I'm still not going to use the word intentional, but it did not look as, um, I, I guess the word's unfortunate, as I said, because it seemed like it, it was too... I don't know how to really phrase it, too perfect of a setup for it to have been accidental. Haha, that's how we're going to phrase it. For the power to have gone out literally right before hitting a bridge and it, it made it, I mean, they were nowhere near the middle of the channel to get through anyway. They were so far to the right and to hit that bridge that it made no sense. But anyway, the FBI has opened a criminal investigation focusing on the massive container ship that brought down the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore last month, a probe that will look at, uh, look at least in part at whether the crew left the port knowing the vessel had serious systems problems, according to two U.S. officials familiar with the matter. This is from the Washington Post, and you guys can see here. This is the cargo ship that these guys are scaling right now, and that's remnants of the bridge. I mean, that is just... That's a lot right there. The people who were on the crew on the boat have been on the boat for like two weeks. I didn't understand why they would not let them off, how they couldn't get them off. I mean, you could easily bring a helicopter in and the, sa the same way they save people from the middle of the ocean. I didn't understand why the people, the crew on the boat were not allowed to leave the boat. Maybe it's because they knew they were going to have to open up this uh, federal investigation and they didn't want anybody running maybe possibly, but also leaving them on the boat gave them the ability to mess with things. So I never, I didn't understand why they didn't let anybody off the boat. Now authorities are reviewing the events leading up to the moment when the Dolly, basically a thousand foot long Singapore flagship lost power while leaving the port of Baltimore and slammed into one of the bridge's support pillars. This is according to the officials, um, speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss the ongoing probe. Now remember there were tugboats, brother, sister, a pair of tugboats that that pulled the dolly out to the channel to go under the francis scott key bridge like it, it was where it needed to be the tugboats had done their job it's not up to them to get them underneath the bridge they're supposed to get them to that wide opening of the channel to get out and they did their part power was going whatever else and then all of a sudden they're not on the path of the where they need to be they're all too far to the right the power happens to go out they can't possibly you know steer without the power they throw an anchor according to them which did no good but also makes it look like it pulled the boat to the right although who who really knows what happens hopefully the fbi investigation will give some sort of um closure on what it is it says here let's see if i can get on Monday morning, which is today, federal agents appeared to board the ship to conduct a search, which is that picture I just showed you of the people scaling the side of the boat. Less than an hour after the sun rose at 6.30 a.m., a succession of three boats pulled to the port side of the dolly. About 6.50 a.m. on Monday, people wearing yellow or orange life jackets entered the dolly through a lower door and climbed a ladder to the ship's bow. Bow? Bow. 
About a half hour later, nearly a dozen more people wearing dark clothing pulled up in a smaller boat and climbed aboard. It makes me think of men in black. I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure the dark clothing, those are the, like the, the serious FBI agents, right? The FBI is present aboard the cargo ship Dolly conducting court authorized law enforcement activity. This is what an agent said in a statement this morning. Um, the FBI did not have any additional public information and would not comment further because, of course, they're not going to. The Justice Department confirmed federal agents were on the ship conducting a court-approved search. The criminal inquiry escalates efforts to determine what occurred leading to the crash and who should be held accountable for the disaster. You had a president... You had Joe Biden immediately after all this happened, you know, have this entire, um, what's the word when he gets like up at the podium, whatever, stumbles up to the podium and tries to remember to read the teleprompter correctly, whatever that's called. I can't, whatever, my brain's not working. He had one of those and he was like, we're going to do what we can to get this bridge back up and going, you know, and like was saying that government's going to pay for it and stuff. The hell for why why would taxpayers or government money pay for a bridge that this ship took out it should be on the ship it wasn't the bridge's fault the bridge did nothing wrong the bridge was where the bridge was supposed to be it had nothing to do with this ship not doing its job correctly or these people on the ship not doing their job correctly so the whoever owns that boat uh needs to be paying for this they have insurance for a reason okay it should not be up to the president of the united states to repair this bridge it should not be up to the people of baltimore to repair this bridge it should be up to the people who own this boat and didn't have it either either had the wrong crew on there who did things incorrectly either accidentally or on purposefully or um did not take care of the boat and make sure that it was good to go before trying to get through this channel to get out you know to make its way over to i think we said it was going to sri lanka Sing Singapore, Sri Lanka. I don't remember where it's going, but it was the Indian crew on there. That's all I remember. Um, it's up to them to pay for everything that's going to cost to rebuild this bridge. What do we say here? Uh, da -da. News of the criminal inquiry emerged the same day Baltimore Mayor Brandon M. Scott announced that the city had hired two law firms to work with the city's own legal team to hold the wrongdoers responsible and to mitigate the immediate and long-term harm caused to Baltimore City residents. Grace Ocean Private LTD, that's who owns the Dolly, and Synergy Marine uh, PTE LTD is the ship's manager. Both are based in Singapore. Yes, so it's a Singapore boat. They were headed to Sri Lanka, empty, which was interesting because how often do you have an entire cargo ship with containers empty going from one port to another? You would think they would be taking something over to Sri Lanka and then bringing stuff back, but to spend all that money to send empty containers, that was very interesting to me, number one. Um, my office generally will not confirm the existence of or otherwise comment about investigations. This is a U.S. attorney for Maryland, Eric L. Barron, said in a statement. However, the public should know whether it's gun violence, civil rights abuse, financial fraud, or any other threat to public safety or property, we will seek uh, accountability for anyone who may be responsible. The owner and operator of the ship and attorneys representing them also did not immediately respond to a request for a comment. Surprise, surprise. Now, the the crash happened on March 26th, roughly 1.26-ish a.m., where the, the dolly hit the bridge, crumpled it. Eight people were working. They said, originally they said six. It turned out to be eight. They were uh, repairing concrete and filling potholes like we talked about. Six members of the repair crew fell into the water and died. Two survived. So it was six people they were looking for. Now, the criminal investigation is separate from the probe that the National Transportation Safety Board, N NTSB, has launched to determine the cause of the crash and assess other safety-related measures. We know how slow NTSB is on things, especially if you remember the February 3rd, 2023, Norfolk Southern train derailment and subsequent intentional release of liquids by the people, the, the fire chief and governor um, of the, the, what was it? Oh, no, 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 brain, come on, work. What was the, the vinyl chloride? Vinyl chloride? Vinyl chloride. Yes, the intentional release of that and the intentional setting of fire to said vinyl chloride. Norfolk Southern had the derailment. Ohio, though, decided to do the rest of it. And that's always been questionable to me why nobody really talks about that. But anyway, um, and then Norfolk Southern just signed off on $600 million that it'll be paying to East Palestine, Ohio, as a settlement, if you will. And that's outside of all the money, almost like a billion dollars at this point, that they have spent to repair and and clean up and everything else, the whole area from the derailment. But NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, and Pete Bootyjag, Booty, Booty 
Pete B. I can never say his last name, and I don't know why. Probably because it starts with booty. I don't know. But Pete B. and his whole NTSB and then the EPA and everybody else. I mean, they dragged ass for the longest amount of time when it came to what was going on in East Palestine, Ohio. I can see this taking just as long, if not longer. The opening of a criminal investigation means the Coast Guard's Marine Board of Investigation, will be, inv which is investigating in parallel to the NTSB, will pause evidence collection but it will still be able to analyze evidence it has already gathered to inform safety efforts like new regulations or inspection campaigns, according to a Coast Guard official who spoke on condition of anonymity due to the ongoing investigations. I don't know why the word anonymity makes me want to go watch Finding Nemo every single time because it makes it sound like an anemone. An anemone? That's where the fish live? Whatever. President Biden... And Maryland Gover Governor Wes Moore, Democrat, have both previously said they intend to hold accountable any parties deemed potentially liable for the destruction of the bridge. Now, a statement today announcing uh, the city hired DiCello, Levitt, and Saltz Mangaluzzi Bendeski trial lawyers. I don't even know what that sounds like. It sounds like something from The Sopranos. Um, Scott said the city will take decisive action to seek accountability for the Keybridge collapse, including the owner, charterer, <laughs> charterer, operator and manufacturer of the Dolly and any other potentially liable third parties. Scott said his administration was forced to act quickly to protect the city's interests after the Dolly's owner and manager within days of the crash, y'all, filed a petition in federal court to limit its liabi liability. We talked about this uh, a couple days after it happened, that the Dolly at that time, uh, they were like, hey, we want nothing to do with this. Then all these other companies came out and said, hey, you know, with this port being all jacked up the way it is in Baltimore, we're, gonna, um, we're going to pull the, um, oh, what is the word? Come on, Michelle, you can do this. Um, oh, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> My brain's not working. <sighs> when you can stop your contract or make... Changes to your contract due to acts of God. Although this barge crashing into this bridge and, and bridge and collapsing it is not really an act of God. It was an act of, you know, the, the boat and the people on the boat. Um, what is the word? Force majeure. Ha <laughs> ha. Look, I just got to think about it sometimes. So all these companies are pulling force majeure saying that they can now alter their contracts, change their contracts since they can't um, deliver to the port of Baltimore anymore. What, whatever they were supposed to do to deliver to there, they can now change it and say, well, we have to deliver all the way up here because that one's closed. And now it's on the people, the companies, the whatever, that were waiting for their um, deliveries here. They are now going to be responsible from getting it to the, from the new point over to here. Whereas the company before that had to deliver here, if they had to stop sooner for some reason of their own, they would have had to pay the difference to get it from the new port to new port, from the new place to the one they were supposed to be at. But because they can claim force majeure, which I'm pretty sure is the right term. I hope I'm not effing that up. Um, they can then say, no, we're just going to drop it here. You have to figure out how to get it from the new point A to the original point A. And it's not on us anymore. We wipe our hands of it. It is what it is. It saves those companies money it costs these companies way more money. So all those materials that were supposed to show up to the port of Baltimore before this whole Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, all those things that were supposed to show up there and now going to a different place, it's going to cost them so much more money for the foreseeable future until they can get this bridge working again. Because again, we talked about it before, there are two tunnels that can be um, driven through, but you cannot deliver the same things through there that you can via barge or whatever else. So all the pricing of everything over there is going to be hella wonky for like the longest time until they can get this bridge back up. Now, this bridge going back up may hinge on how fast they can say, Dolly, you're responsible. Give us money. You know, insurance money, they drag feet on that. They're not trying to give you money before they absolutely have to. So this could be like something that takes forever. I don't see Baltimore being willing to sit there, you know, with their thumbs up their butt going, oh, we'll just wait because they rely heavily on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I mean, it's a massive port. All these um, ships that have been stuck there during this. I mean, you have national, you have Coast Guards that are stuck there. You have Navy stuck there. You have other ships that are stuck there. It's costing people a lot of money due to this one ship making such a drastic error, if you will, in my opinion. Um, well, I don't even say error because I still don't know if it's, you know, intentional or not. I, I don't have enough information. It looked intentional, but that's all I'm saying. But because of them, it's wreaking havoc on 
numerous, numerous things, not just the city, but the suppliers, the businesses, the, all the other people that are stuck there in that port. So I think it's, it's going to be an interesting, long drawn out thing. I mean, uh, East Palestine, Ohio has been a year and two months and it's still technically going. So see how long this one takes Monday, private uh, attorneys for three of the construction workers who fell into the river, including one who survived and two who died announced they were also pursuing legal action. The families of the people who lost the, the workers, um, who lost, you know, brothers, fathers, whoever they happen to be, they are going to be entitled to compensation. If you want to speak in lawyers terms for the fact that this happened, I don't know. Do they go after the, the Dolly also, do they go after the city of Baltimore? Are they going after the construction crew that these men worked for? Who knows, but it's going to be a continuous thing. So we'll talk about this every so often, but I wanted to bring it to your attention today because of the fact that it's just like barge crapola over the last couple weeks or, or since then. And I think it's, I hope that we're not going to have a whole bar bar barrage, really barrage of barges, uh, and crashing and loose and like getting loose in rivers like we did with trains and everything last year. So fingers crossed. <laughs> this is the last time we have to talk about barges, except for updates on the Francis Scott key bridge. So that is that squirrel tribe. I love you guys. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. See you tomorrow. Bye.